uh, coloring. What I have here, whoops, I just dropped. What these are here is, uh, this is glass, glass coloring. I don't know if you can see that. It's what you would use to, um, like, mimic a stained glass window. Um, you can get this at most uh, Michaels. Okay, what, uh, we did some coloring. And I don't know if you can see this or not, but it's, uh, this is the coloring we used when we used the stained glass coloring. I went over it a couple more times. It's kind of a, it's kind of looks like a paint. Uh, it's, it's kind of obscure, uh, but it, you know, it makes it, it makes it different. Uh, you can use anything to cover your bell with. Uh, the, uh, I'm going to put a sealant on this so that it's a little more weather sturdy. Uh, especially here in the northwest, we have ultraviolet rays that seem to destroy all kinds of paints, but and the weather, um, but it still it doesn't affect the sound. So what we're going to do next? Oh, and then the other one that uh, we had made. is dry now. I painted it and what this is is just regular just regular spray paint. It's uh, I use some gold and silver to kind of mix it up and I'll put a sealant on that as well. Now uh, at Bear Steel Art we can powder coat these so I normally powder coat with a clear or powder coat with uh, uh, colors which most of the other bells that you've seen are done with colored uh, powder coating and uh, that's great if you have access to that but this can be done in your garage at home um, in your basement it, it can be done pretty simply anywhere that you're at and these products are inexpensive and local so this one we need to put our string in for the uh, clacker or the dangler or whatever you want to call it and we'll do that next this one, remember, we put the wire into the eyelet and it's hanging inside and it's hanging down here and it's secure. So all we need to do here is put uh, our, finish our pieces up and I'll demonstrate that next. And that's pretty much it. Uh, let's, and I have one uh, other that will finish uh, and uh, hopefully this has been educational and helps you with making a bell or a gong of your own. Uh, I sell these at bear, uh, art, uh, bearsteelart.com. I also have more of what I've made there. Uh, check out my website. See what you think. Uh, we're always adding to it. Um, if you're local in the Spokane uh, area, uh, Washington State, uh, stop into uh, Spokane, uh, Spok the heart of Spokane store off of uh, Monroe Street and uh, you can see some of the art and also purchase some of my art through that uh, through that store. Um, so we'll move on and finish these up. Okay so what we're going to do is take this one that we used the uh, stained glass uh, formula on. I just cut out out of a 2x4 a a block of wood and kind of rounded the corners a little. Uh, I like to use hardwoods but uh, I don't have any hardwoods right now like oak, um, maple, cherry wood. Uh, if you want to get exotic, cocobola wood is a very hard and heavy wood and it has a good sound. Uh, this though will work. So it's a little softer the, than the hardwoods. Uh, I've also used uh, metal against metal in the uh, in the bell. It's not always the sound that appeases you. It's a it's kind of a higher pitch. So we're going to go with the, the wood block. So how do we get it to stay in there? Well, what I do, I take a little piece of uh, a little piece of copper pipe which I'll kind of bring into the camera here and I just cut it off small and this is going to be slip, slipped onto the uh, cable and what I'm going to do is put this 
about where I want the block of wood to stop. So I'm going to put the piece of wood in, which now becomes the clacker, I guess, of the bell. Kind of measure where I want it. I want it kind of at the edge uh, to where it gets the best sound possible. So with it marked right there with my fingers, I'm now going to crush this uh, copper tube onto the cable, which will act as a stop. Uh, you could add glue if you wanted to, uh, super glue or reinforce it, but usually if you just crimp, it, crimp the uh, metal piece on there, it's going to be sufficient to hold it. Uh, and you kind of have to have one above the block and below the block. Of course, the one below the block, obviously, so the block of wood doesn't slip off. But there's where I got it. It's kind of exposed a little bit, but it's a, it's about where I wanted, wanted it measured. Okay, so now I'm going to take the other small piece of copper tube that I cut out, slip it onto the cable. And as snug as I can get it to the base of the wood. And I'm crimping that off, crimping that as well. And now we have a piece of wood as a clacker inside the bell. Which you can see. So when the wind blows, it will be a light tone like that. Okay. And that's pretty much how it looks on the inside. Uh, this will hang like that. Okay, so now what? Now what do we do? Well, I like to put something down at the bottom that's going to catch the wind and move that around to make the noise. So what I do is I went to the tackle shop and I picked up some uh, swivel hooks, some eye hooks. Um, these are, uh, you can find these at any tackle shop. And they uh, open up, they have a clasp. So now what that does is it allows me to change some of the, some of the ornaments that hang down. Um, since I make these to sell, sometimes people like the bell but not the not the ornament hanging down, so this way they can change them out or I can swap them out. What works with this fishing line, I have some uh, shrink wrap electric tubing. Uh, and these you can pick up at an automotive store, hardware store. And it comes in a multiple, uh, a bunch of different sizes. What we're going to do is cut cut this uh, in half because we don't need a whole, a whole length of one. And then I'm going to go to the next size bigger and cut it in half as well. Alright, so now what do we do? Let me zoom in a little. Okay, what we're going to do next is with this piece of metal, or the piece of wire hang, holding out, I'm going to slide the shrink wrap over a single end. And I'll show you why I double it. It's, uh, the wire is really strong. Now I'll put the bigger piece over that. Okay, and kind of push that out of the way. Now, what I want to do is kind of measure how high or where that eyelet's going to be, or where the wind chime part is going to be. And that's a pretty good distance. Uh, eight to six inches, the wind catches it, it, it rings the bell nicely. What am I going to use? Well, I have for this one, I uh, cut out earlier, and again, if you have a plasma cutter, uh, it can be anything. You can uh, stamp out something out of a tin sheet. Uh, cut it out by hand. Uh, plasma cutter makes it easier, but uh, you can hang anything. Reflectors, uh, 
just a square piece of wood, uh, something else, anything that catches the wind. I'm going to put this uh, maple leaf, which I have prepared to uh, hang on here. So I'm going to uh, put the fishing eyelet on the cable. I'm going to put a bend or a kink in the cable. This kind of reconfirms that this is where it's going to stop. Okay, now I'm going to slide the the uh, shrink wrap down over over the cable. Okay. Now that the shrink wrap is over the cable, we're going to take a little bit of heat, uh, a match, and heat that up. And let's see here. Hopefully my burner works. It does. So we're going to heat that and be considerate of your time. If you hold it on there too long, you're just going to melt the plastic away and then you'll have to do it again. Um, and then let it cool before you tug on it. And it takes a little bit to cool because the metal heats up. If you go too fast and you don't let it cool, the metal will cut through uh, steel cable and cut through the plastic. And pretty much you just hang your wind ornament and lock it on. And there you have it. There's your uh, there's your bell. And I think that turned out just fine. If you have any questions, uh, send them to me and we'll get back to you. Thanks for watching the video and I hope it helped.